Are we good? Yes, we are live from the Visco Dental Carpool. We are on our way to get some food. And while we do that, well, first of all, I'm going to introduce uh, my chauffeur and co-pilot. Um, we got Chase. Um, he is my little helper. And then, of course, we got Allison, who's taking care of business, technical um, issues, difficulties, all sorts of wonderful things. So we are here in Chase's car. This is a Lane Cruise. This is what he drives every day to work. So today we are going to talk about post-op sensitivity. Can and you buckle up, please? No. So po post-op sensitivity, if I buckle up, Chase, nobody will see me. Look. Here well, in the back. People, you, you sit in the people oh, are logging in so they can see me, not see you drive. You know, we're, go we're on our way to get some food and we're going to talk about post-op sensitivity. Um, the most important thing about post-op sensitivity is that this is a something that can happen to anyone. This is something that is not related to some people, you know, doing that bonding technique uh, in, a, in a bad manner or doing things wrong. It has nothing to do with that. Ellie says hi. Ellie. Who's Ellie? Ellie. Ward. Ellie. Oh, hello, <laughs> Ellie. This, uh, this is the first person who get who, who who's connected, right? Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Say hello to Ellie and tell her that she's uh, she won a prize to be the first person connected. And the prize is Chase will be waving at her. Wave at <laughs> Ellie. There you go, Ellie. There's your prize. So, post-op sensitivity is something that happens to uh, almost everybody who's doing restorative dentistry and using you know bonding techniques. It, it, it's not uh, something that we may consider a failure, but it is very annoying. And we have to find a way to prevent this. Now, I understand that a lot of people, when I talk to them, when I lecture around and talk to them, a lot of guys tell me, oh, well, you know, I don't get any sensitivity at all. But that's not the average person. The average, the average person will encounter sensitivity. Not a lot, but it will happen. And I think that there is a way to avoid this, all right? And, and there are many ways to avoid this, but we're going to talk about a, a way to avoid post-op sensitivity based upon the bonding technique that's being used. But first of all, let's see. Oh, look, we got messages. Let's see, who do we have here? Mark says, hi, Dr. Mark oh, Mark Reiholz. Hello, Mark, how you doing? Blanca Denise, hello, doctor, she says. Hello, Blanca. Blanca is in Mexicali, Mexico. She's a dear friend of mine. We got Dr. Figuera, how you doing, Johan? Dale, dale. Dr. Figuera. So, um, if we think about the bonding technique that is being used, a lot of people use total edge. Total edge technique requires that you use phosphoric acid on top of the enamel and the dentin simultaneously. And then after you um, etch for a certain amount of time, let's say anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds, um, you should uh, rinse it away, leave the dentin moist, and then apply your bonding agent. The biggest issue is to remove the excess moisture after rinsing. Some people use high back to remove the excess moisture. You know where you're going, Chase? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are we going, Chase? Sonic. Sonic. We're going to get tater tots from Sonic. Those are great. Okay. So some people <laughs> use high back to remove the excess moisture, the excess water. Some people will use other means such as like foam pellets, cotton pellets, and some people will use a little bit of air to remove that excess moisture. But we always have to leave a little bit of moisture behind. We need to provide the dentin with some moisture and also provide this moisture in order for the adhesive to work better. The adhesive most adhesives, if not all adhesives, will require a certain amount of moisture for it to work. Okay, Chase! What are you doing, man? Okay. This is, this, this is not funny, dude. What happened? Okay, you don't know what you're doing. I'm fine. All right, okay. All right, so, okay, here we go. We are entering Sonic. This is amazing. Ahmed says hi. Who? Ahmed. Ahmed, how you doing, Ahmed? Ahmed. Hello there. He's probably, oh, Ahmed, I know you. Yes, I recognize your picture. How you doing, buddy? All right, so, removing the excess moisture 
it's a huge, huge deal because that will leave. What do you want? What do I you want tater tots. Do they have tater tots? Yes. Just ask for tater tots. Oh, they do have tater tots. Okay. A small? No, large. Okay. You? I'm good. She's good. I'm fine too. You're okay. a tater tot guy. <laughs> yes, I'm a tater tot. Here, here's some money. Okay. So, <laughs> leaving the dentin moist will allow for the <laughs> adhesive to properly penetrate into the dentinal tubules that have been exposed and through the collagen fiber network. Hey, I'm trying to order. Okay. Ask the person if, if, if the, ask her if she flosses. Okay. She's, you're, you're not getting anything. I'm not getting anything. Why don't you use the touchpad? Look, I, pr press to order. I did. You're not pressing the button. <laughs> there you go. See what I'm saying? Now you're doing, oh my God. I didn't Bobby know you had to hit it hi. twice. Who? Fabi. Hello, Fabi. How you doing? Fabi Marchena. Okay, so going back to the thing. When you apply the adhesive, you need for the dentin to be moist. Now, this moisture is of crucial. It's, it's of crucial need because the adhesive needs to penetrate into the dentin and to properly seal the dentinal tubules. What happens sometimes is that when we use air, we can induce uh, the collapse of collagen. And when collagen collapses, it will act as a barrier for proper <laughs> sealing of the dentinal tubules. Now, there is a theory developed by Dr. Martin Brandstrom, and it is called the hydrodynamic theory of sensitivity. It is related to the um, uh, stimulus that is generated inside the dentinal tubules. Inside the dentinal tubules. Corey wants a sonic slushie. Some people from work are asking oh, for stuff. We're not providing anything to anybody. All right. Please and thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> so the dentinal tubules need to be sealed. All right, need to be sealed because the stimulus inside the dentinal tubule. All right, and. You, you have to remember that inside a dentinal tubule there is a odontoplastic prolongation. What? Hi. Can I get a um, large tater tot? All right. And one question, young lady. Do you floss? Ignore him. Okay, I didn't get an answer. That's I did all. not get an answer. <laughs> it's a simple question. Cash. Cash. We're paying cash. Okay, All right. Thank you. I just asked her if she flossed. What, what's wrong with that? What do you think, Allison? Is that a is, is that a rude question? Well, it's not part of her job description. What? It's <laughs> not <laughs> really. It's just a question. Well, anyway, inside the dentinal tubule, we have these um, odontoblastic prolongations, and if we don't seal the tubules. Whenever there is a change in pressure, pH, or temperature, the stimulus will travel through the dentinal tubule and it will, you know, end up at the odontoblast, which is located at the periphery of the pulp. Now, the reaction will be pain. That is one of the main reasons why we have post op sensitivity. Now, if you think about all this that I have explained, the main reason why you need to be careful is because the dentinal tubules are open before etching the dentinal tubules were sealed with a smear layer. Now the etch will remove the smear layer, it will remove the inorganic component of dentin, hydroxyapatite, leaving behind the organic component which is collagen. Now this is where it gets really tricky because a lot of people sometimes will not be careful enough to keep that moisture level properly and also by using air they will induce a collapse of the collagen fibers and we don't want that we want to make sure our collagen remains moist and our dentin remains moist no you know no collapsing of the collagen and that way our adhesive will be able to what, what are you doing chase what what is chase doing now nothing what is he doing is he turning on his phone are you I think he's watching YouTube why, why are you watching YouTube while I'm doing a live video I'm watching this you. is work <laughs> I'm watching I, you <laughs> That's stupid. I'm, 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 I'm next to you right here. I'm just making sure it's okay. Everything is okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeez, Allison, why, did, why is he driving? Because I can drive. You let him. I let him, right? Okay. Anyway, so we need to figure out 
the best way to remove the excess water in order to allow the adhesive to properly seal the dentinol tubes. Now, the smear layer was there before. Is there a way we can work with the smear layer? Is there a way we can work and achieve bonding without having to open the dentinal tubules? Yes, the answer is yes. By using a different bonding technique called cell fetch. Now, this is strictly undented, strictly undented. When we use, let's say for example, a universal bonding agent, such as Chase, universal bonding agent. What is your favorite universal bonding agent? Alban, all right. Alban Universal. Alban Universal is a product made by Visco. It's a universal bonding agent, all right? Other companies have also universal bonding agents. And the cool thing about universal bonding agent is that they work on both Total Edge and Self Edge. What's so funny? <laughs> Read the comment. Okay, what comment? We need a small tater tots for Stephen Bloom. Who's Stephen Bloom? <laughs> Stephen, listen, listen, Stephen. I hope you're a dentist and you're learning about dentistry. We are not <laughs> providing food for people who are logged in and watching us. This is just by serendipity we decided to come to Sonic. All right? No, we're not taking orders. What are we? What, Grubhub? No. This is the, what? What's the thing? What you call it? The, the, the Uber Eats? No, we're not Uber Eats. We're not providing any sort of food to any of y'all. All right. So. When you think about universal bonding agents that they can work in both total edge mode and self edge mode, you can actually achieve good bonding to the dentin without having to edge the dentin. So you're leaving the smear layer behind, the dentinal tubules are kept sealed, and the bonding agent will be able to alter, all right, to have an impact on that smear layer, right? and penetrate it and bond to sound dentin. That's a really interesting phenomenon because now you're removing one step, which is the etching, um, the etching step. You are not, you, you, you don't have to think about proper moisture. You don't have to think about how do I remove the excess water. You don't have to think about collapsing the collagen fibers. You don't have to worry about having to seal the dentinal tubules. All you have to do is follow the manufacturer's instructions of your universal bonding agent. Usually, and, 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 I, if, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to apologize, but of all the universal bonding agents that I've tested in the lab, all of them require some scrubbing, some sort of um, agitation. Okay, So when you apply it on the dentin uh, surface, you have to scrub it, rub it in, Okay, follow the instructions, evaporate the solvent, and light cure. Right there and then, you will achieve good bond. For the most part, most universal bonding agents, regardless of the brand, and we're talking about important brands, recognizable brands, such as 3M's, such as, hey, shout out to the guys at 3M, Minnesota, they're probably watching us, learning a little bit Ooh. about bonding. Come on, Minnesota! So we got um, the 3M guys, the guys from Ivoclar, um, the guys um, from, what's another company? Um, Kerr also has a universal bonding agent. Ultradent, I believe, well, I'm not sure about Ultradent. Coltin Weldon has a universal bonding agent. Mm -hmm. um, all these companies have similar products, okay? They vary in formulation. They have very specific um, uh, things that they're similar, but also they have very specific differences and we're, we're not here to talk about that but all of these products require some sort of rubbing scrubbing some sort of agitation motion when you apply it on dentin when by doing that you will achieve good bond and you won't have to worry about sensitivity what is what does it say Gary Alex still better to etch enamel with okay so dr. Alex is saying something that is completely true remember maybe dr. Alex logged in a little late. I'm talking about dentin. Enamel is a different story, okay? And today's video is about post-op sensitivity. But he makes a very good point. Enamel has to be etched with phosphoric acid. It's the best way to achieve the best bond possible on that surface. You need to etch with phosphoric acid. That is a fact.
This is undisputable. And dentin, you don't have to etch with phosphoric acid. You need to etch, but you can etch by using a self-etch technique, all right? Which requires the application of the adhesive in a scrubbing or rubbing motion, following the manufacturer's instructions, and then you will achieve a good bond. On the enamel, regardless of the adhesive, you still need to etch with, uh, with phosphoric acid. So, where are the tater tots? It's on the way. Uh, well, where does it say it's on the way? It just went to a different screen. Different screen? What, what's going on? I'm hungry, dude. I still didn't. Okay, anybody else wants anything? Uh, no, we're good. Steven, where the hell are you? Maybe... <laughs> oh, look! This guy over here, he's saying hello from Poland. We're not, we're not delivering food to Poland. <laughs> we're not, we're not. We're not delivering food to Poland. We're good. Okay, so... In order to conclude here, post-op sensitivity can be related to phosphoric acid etching. And I know, I know that a lot of you have been doing total etch for a long time without encountering any problems. I respect that and, you know, more power to you. I know a lot of colleagues that tell me, Rolando, I don't need to change my technique because I have been successful doing total etch. That's fine, but that's not everyone. Whenever I lecture, I ask the same question. Raise your hand, those of you who have encountered post-op sensitivity after bonding. And at least, at least half of the auditorium will raise their hand. Okay, yes. Okay, how much is that? Now, here's the best part of doing live videos. First of all, shout out to Sonic right here, Sonic, and of course, Tater Tots. Tater Tots are great. Thank you. Maybe I want one. Now you want one. You <laughs> told me you were not a Tater Tart person, that you wanted ice cream from McDonald's. No. Okay, fine, here, have one. I'll have one. Yeah, okay. You want me to this put is, them in your pocket? No, <laughs> this is, that, well, I'm not Napoleon Dynamite. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you go out with children. They eat your food, they always want food at the end. When you ask them if they want before, they say, no, I don't like that. And then as soon as it arrives, oh, I want some of that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, young lady, one question. Do, do you floss? Uh, yes. Yes, she flosses. <laughs> All right, I sh come here, come here. Show your face here. We're doing a live video. Come on in. We got a bunch of people. They need to see you. They need to see your face. Look at her. She flosses. She's got ortho treatment and she flosses yeah. it. Bump it, bump it. At a girl. People need to floss more. Here's your tater tot change. Okay. Now, we're going to McDonald's and we're going to end this video. If you have any questions, feel free to write a comment, leave a comment, leave your question, and I will answer it as soon as I can. Remember, what I said here is not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make you change the way you practice dentistry or the way you do your bonding. What I'm trying to do here is to provide a little bit of information on how to avoid post-op sensitivity. It worked for me. I've been doing um, selective um, self-etch to dentin since 1999. When I heard that, I, 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 my practice, I did it, and it worked for me. And I am an advocate of self-etching dentin. Enamel is a different story and we will definitely talk about that in another video. Now, Chase, I want you to say goodbye to our, um, to our audience of how many people? Oh, we, we have 12 right now. 12 people! Oh my God, we are going to cause an impact. All right, we are causing an impact. I need a floss. Okay, so right here, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not reading any of those messages that are not related to our video. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say again, if you have any questions, you can leave them here. If you have any comments, you can leave them here. And I will try to answer all of your questions um, as they come along. Chase, say goodbye to our people. Bye, people. Allison, say goodbye to our people. Bye. It's been a pleasure, guys. And again, remember, you need to floss and you need to tell your patients that they need to floss. A boomer. Let's go. <laughs>